Hello, I'm Troy Abels from Hanford, California, and you are listening to Gospel Tangents. It's the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology, and first daily Mormon history podcast. I'm Rick Bennett. In our next conversation with theologian Janice Allred, we're going to talk more about uh, the fact that she still goes to the LDS Church some 30 years later after she's been excommunicated. We'll also talk about how she got back on the LDS radar, so you won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. Wow. You know what's amazing to me in talking with you, Margaret, Paul, Maxine, and Michael Quinn, I haven't been able to get uh, Lynn Whitesides or, or, or uh, Abraham on yet, but the five of you for sure, and I would, I would, and I would assume the other two are the same. Well, I would say uh, conclude Abraham for sure. He was the first one that was rebaptized. Yes, he, he was. He was only out about a year. No, or so. he he sought rebaptism very very. Yeah. But all, all six of you, maybe maybe all eight of you are still to this day deep, deep believers in Mormonism and that Joseph Smith was a prophet. To me, it's pretty astonishing, given that the church has excommunicated or disfellowshipped all of you, that you maintain this fervent testimony. Why? (laughs) When you've been so mistreated. Yeah, I guess your testimony is not in man. Is that? That's it? right. No, because and, and this, I know this for about Margaret. We're sisters. <laughs> we have been. We you talk been, a little bit, huh? We've been close our entire lives, and and we were not raised to see the church as as the most important thing, and that's not in our hearts. For us, the most important thing is our testimony of Christ, mm-hmm. and. Um, Yes, the church is important to me because I do believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet. And the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price, the revelations in those scriptures to me are so important in the theology that I have been working on. And so I cannot, I couldn't work on this theology without those revelations. So, of course, I am, I am, I am loyal to that. The institutional church, well, we see many problems in it. <laughs> well, I know, I, I heard, I'm very sad to hear, because I really wanted to get Levina on. Apparently, she has poor health, and, and so an interview is not going to happen there, and I feel terrible about that. Um, but my understanding is she has continued to go to church every week for the last 30 years, you know, barring health problems, I guess. Uh, is is that the same with you? That's true. And, That's what I um, thought. So my husband teaches physics at BYU. Still? He's still, he, he has not retired. Wow. <laughs> He's the same age as I am, which in case anyone wants to know, you can look it up so I will not be hesitant to tell you I'm 76. Okay. And... <laughs> And he, he still teaches at BYU and will probably, he always says he's going to retire in two years. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rolling two years. <laughs> it is. Definitely. He loves he loves working there. And um, it was very... They don't important. hassle him? No, no. Oh, wow. The physics department has been very supportive uh, of him and me. I'll and you still go to church every week? I do. It, so at the time I was excommunicated, we have nine children. Our oldest was married. She had been married in the temple, um, and she had a, a baby. And our two older sons went on missions. Our oldest son uh, went just as this was starting. He went just after I gave my speech in 1992. Our youngest was uh, one month old when I gave that speech. Was his name Nephi? Yes. That's what I remembered. Okay, that's what I remembered that. And Nephi went on his mission that year, and then um, when he returned home, the week he got home, my pay, my picture was on the front page of the Salt Lake Tribune. Oh no! And it was the the story of my being in trouble for giving the speech. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so 
Oh, it was a different speech. I, I forget. But And Joel, my second son, was on a mission at that time. So, yeah, Nephi left right after I gave the speech. And then I was warned against publishing it. But this is what happened. As we were leaving to go to Mexico, this was in just before the September 6th. For Bruce's sabbatical. Yes, for, for David. David's sabbatical. David, sorry. So um, my friend, Marty Bradley, who was editor of, of Dialogue at that time, said, we're doing an issue on God the Mother. Do you have anything? You could... <laughs> I said, sure. Yes, I do, as a matter of I fact. I got lots of stuff. So I, I submitted that paper and going, not knowing, thinking, okay, I told President Bacon I would tell him if they're going to publish it. You submit a paper, you don't know if they're going to publish it. Right. Why cause all this disturbance until I know what's going to happen? I intended when I submitted it, I hoped they would publish it. If they accepted it, I intended to publish it, and then I intended to tell him. And now, then, can I ask how often you've been turned down? <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. A bunch of times. A f enough times, sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a sure thing that you're going to get published. No, no, definitely not. No. So, and I didn't know, you know. This was a piece of serious theological work. Mm -hmm. And peop uh, journals do not always want that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Um, we go to Mexico, and uh, I get all these. Communication was not good. I did not hear anything from my sister, but this dear friend of mine sent me copies of all these articles. So we're getting all this news. And um, when, I, when we got back, we had all this mail, and there was a letter of acceptance from Dialogue. Oh. They had accepted my piece. And, you know, things are... I have all these children. It's Christmas. You know, it takes a while. I don't know when the when it's coming out, you know. Right. Yeah, publication can take... It can take a long time. Years sometimes. You've got the editing process. You've got this whole thing. So and There's always back and forth. Can you <laughs> exactly. change this? Or, yeah. It's too long. Cut out a bunch of stuff. Oh, and in the meantime, again, I can get really upset by... by by um, teachings coming from the church, which I feel are not true. So at the same time, I heard a president who uh, Hinckley was a counselor at this time. He was not the president of the church. It was uh, Benson was, and he gave this speech in which he said, "The Lord will never allow the prophet to lead the church astray," which I felt was not true. So I decided to do my next Sunstone speech on. Uh, a challenging that idea. <laughs> so that's how I that's how I got into the papers. When, <laughs> when <laughs> you are a rabble rouser. I am. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know <laughs> that dialogue had had published in one in one the issue that was coming out in this in the came out in the winter of. This would be 94. The upcoming articles, and one of them happened to be my article. <laughs> oh, so they hadn't published the article just so no. that they were going to publish it. Yes, and so some spy calls this to the attention of President Bacon. Oh, he's your state president. Who is my state president. And so he then is going to, um, he calls me, yeah, again, Exact timing of all this. In in any in any case, it's in the Mormon Alliance article. Yes, I'll put it a is. Link. So, <laughs> I go through it. I go through everything in, in excruciating detail in that article. But uh, yes, yeah, so I know that um, at the same time I'm giving the speeches and son, which challenges the idea that the Lord will not allow the prophet to lead the church astray. Which became it's called "Him Shall You Hear." Him Shall You Hear refers to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The one that we are supposed to hear is the Lord. It's not the prophet. We are never commanded. There are no scriptural references that command us to hear the prophet. We are commanded to hear the Lord. Yes, the prophet sometimes speaks the words of the Lord, but it's not the prophet we are commanded to hear or obey. It's the Lord Himself, and that's a very important point. So. 
That's what that article was about. So this all came out at the same time uh, that I was... And I think I had had a couple of interviews with my stake president, maybe my bishop. Uh, Peggy Stack was calling me to do an interview. Oh. I was telling her, I don't... Was she at the Tribune at the time? Yes. Okay, because she is... She was the executive director of Sunstone in the 1980s. Yes, she was no longer. Okay. So she's already she was, at the Tribune She was now. the first one I worked with at Sunstone. I started, oh, okay. I published with Sunstone in, uh, would have been um, 79, 78, 79. And that's when Peggy was there. Yeah, and she was there then. And I did my first Sunstone presentation at the symposium in 1980. And she was in charge of it then. But this is... She's no longer in charge. She's at the Tribune now. Yeah. And she had wanted to do an interview with me, but I I said, let's wait until I wanted to give it time. And I I didn't want to make it public until I knew for sure that they were going to, to uh, have a court because I felt if I could negotiate through it. I was pretty naive. I should have known. But <laughs> at this point, then it was... Uh, Vern Anderson, who called me right before the symposium where I was giving this paper, him shall you hear, and he said, uh, I read your paper. I didn't realize that the press was reading all these papers. He said, I read your paper. It's really important. And I found out from Peggy Stack that you're being investigated. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, can I do an interview? I said, okay. It's all coming out. So I did. I did the interview with him. About that time, his article appeared on the front page of the Tribune. Oh, boy. That was the same day my son Nephi came home from his mission. Oh, no. And it was on TV and everything. So that's when everything broke loose for me. <laughs> you know, you seem almost shy, but it's amazing to me you're very resilient and very strong when it comes to things that you really believe in. Yeah. And so it, it's funny, as I was reading that article, I don't think you enjoy speaking. Is that true? No, I don't. And, and uh, That's why I appreciate and, you doing this. <laughs> I humorously said to, to, I can't remember who I said, because I had to watch myself on, on these interviews and TV, and I said... If I had known this is what it was leading to, perhaps I would have said, okay, I won't publish. <laughs> but you know, that, that's, uh, you know. <laughs> no, I, I never cared for the interviews. They were hard for me. Yeah. Um, I, I can speak well when I'm speaking about a subject that I care about. I don't really lo like talking about myself. When I did the, uh, the account of my excommunication for the case reports, Levina was the editor, and well, we, we were co editors, and she asked me, so she was helping me. And she would say things to me, like call me back and say, Okay, Janice, how did you feel? <laughs> Put that in. So she helped me do that. Um, and again, the reason I spent all that time and worked so hard to, to write that, we called it a documentary history, because I felt this is not just about me. This is about what does it mean to be a believer in a church community and to have ideas that differ from those that are being promoted by the institution and the hierarchy. How can these issues be resolved? What is the, what is the right way for a church of God to deal with these kinds of issues? I was very interested in that, and I've been interested in that, not just about churches, but about communities in general. How do we live together in peace and harmony and mm -hmm. freedom? All of those questions are very interesting to me. So that's why I wrote. That's why I wrote that account. But and this I'm, is what year again? This is 1994. 94. Okay. So yeah, 1994. So that put you back on the radar again. Yes, <laughs> I am definitely on the radar now. And <laughs> it's the story. Are you still on the radar? Uh, do you think they're watching this? I I don't know. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't got any information about that for a long time, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I do know one thing, which is to me very interesting. My friend Levina did apply to be rebaptized. Yeah, that was in the Tribune recently. Yeah, several. It was a few years ago. Yeah, and she was rejected. 
Mm. To me, that means they're still watching, and that means that if they rejected Levina... Because Maxine Hanks is back. Maxine is back. She joined, what's it been, five or six years probably? It's been about that. And, you know, I... Maxine's story is Maxine's story. Yeah, I'm hoping to get her on too. As as she recount, I I did go to a, a Sun's uh, symposium session, in which she talked about her rebaptism. Right, I went to that one too. And it seemed to me that as she recounted it, it did not fit what I understand are the church procedures for rebaptism, which I know Levina went through. So I don't know. Maxine has to answer for her own. Yeah, but we'll we'll get her on. Yeah, <laughs> in any case. Levina went through all the procedures, and it was rejected. Her stake president accepted it. Her bishop, they both okayed her rebaptism. Mm-hmm. It had to be sent to, I think, because of apostasy, it had to be sent to the first presidency, and they right. rejected it with not any reason for it. So to me, that says they're still watching. <laughs> Or at least somebody is still watching. I don't know who. <laughs> I've been told that they monitor all the blogs, the Molly blogs, everything. And you know, if you if you say something out of the line, they'll they'll let your bishop and your stake president know. That was definitely the case when, when at at this time, which was of course thirty years ago. Uh, it was very clear to me that they were. But my stake president and bishop were being given copies of everything that they had, you know. And there were a couple of things I said, well, if you've got transcripts of all this, could you give me one? Because I don't have written copies of everything. <laughs> they, Did didn't, they didn't like me saying things like that. <laughs> and Margaret, when, when she did her excommunication, the guy had a whole pile of stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. So... Was your bishop, so in 94, you got called in again. Right. So 92 was the first time, and you were told, hey, don't publish this, and you said, I'll let you know. Right. And then 94, there was this notification that they would publish. The bishop was upset. Was it the bishop or the stake president? No, it was the stake president. Stake president was upset that you had submitted something. That, that, That I was going to publish this. Yeah. Because it was... And he said, you know, And he got to that before you could get to him. Yes. He got to me first. I was going, again, when I, I didn't know. Right. Because I hadn't looked. I mean, I do read dialogue, but I was really busy. Yeah. Because well, you were having babies yeah, and weddings. And weddings and stuff. It seems like you had some health problems at this yes, time, Yes, and too. I did. I, I, so it was, I did not know until I was called in, and I think it was, Again, I'll have to refer to the to the to Article. the account. It was either my bishop or I think it was my stake president. It may have been my bishop. So I had had different three different bishops throughout this whole process. So in ninety two, I won't give their names. It's in the history. In nineteen ninety two, my bishop had not spoken to me at all. I think he might have been present. I think he was present for one of my interviews. I had several interviews with President Bacon. One sort of finding things out, then calling in and being told not to publish. I think he was there on that second one, but he said not a word. He never said anything to me about it. Probably didn't want to. No, and then um, it's hard when they put the bishop because he's got to be the friend of the whole ward, and then they're making him the enemy. <laughs> then he was released, and when we went, when we were in Mexico, we had a different bishop. Okay. And again, his name is in the book. A fine person. I liked him a lot. This is the bishop in Mexico? No, no. This is the bishop back in. So we were in Mexico for six months, and then we okay. came back. And then we had a new bishop. Here in Provo. Here in Provo. Okay. It was not the same one who had who had been in interviews before. And he, I think he called me and told me that he, he said, I dropped the ball. I was supposed to tell you not to publish the article. And now President Bacon is upset about it, and he wants to meet with you. This is all before Sunstone, I think, as I recall. It's coming back to me, yeah. So that was the second bishop. Again, he he said, I'm sorry, I dropped the ball. I was supposed to tell you. I said, it's fine. I, I was going to do it anyway. Right. So then our ward was divided. So by the time we get to the court... 
I have another bishop. Bishop number three. Bishop number three. Bishop Hammond, I'll I'll use his name. It's it's in the report. So he's he comes in not having been privy to all this other stuff. He comes in, President Bacon is handling everything. And clearly President Bacon at first had been hesitant. At this time it's widely publicized. He's in contact with Salt Lake. He tells me this himself. <laughs> Two apostles told me. Oh, wow. He told me that, and he said... Um, was and, Packer one of them? I know he was one of Margaret's. I don't know. Uh, he he offered to tell... He said, would it make any difference to you to know which apostles it, it have contacted me about this? I said, no, it wouldn't. So I didn't ever find out. You weren't curious? <laughs> I was curious, but I didn't ask. I should have. <laughs> I should have. Um, although it did become clear to me, and I, I have this in my, in my account of my excommunication, that President Hinckley was actually, um, and he wasn't the president yet, right. but, but he was the one who was, who was pushing for me to be excommunicated. Oh. In a way, it makes sense, because I had contradicted two of his speeches openly in both of my, and these two uh, essays that so were... So it was probably Hinckley and Packer, you think? Packer was definitely behind the September 6th. Yeah. I don't know if he was behind me or not, but I have pretty good evidence that Hinckley was. So. Okay. Packer may have been as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, so. so that was in 1994, and it became, it was very widely publicized um, after that first article in the Tribune. You know, people pick it up, mother of nine being tried for talking about God the mother, you know, it makes a good story. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with theologian Janice Allred. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about what it's like to be on probation, at least it was for her in the LDS Church. Things was unfair. They did everything to me, which a person on, on uh, disfellowshipment has, except one thing they allowed me to do, which was to sustain church authorities. Oh, <laughs> which you weren't doing a very good job of. <laughs> well, not according to their definition. According to my definition, I was. <laughs> if you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, subscribe on either Patreon or at GospelTangents.com. For just $5 a month, you can hear the entire audio uninterrupted. On our $10 tier, if you'd like to see the whole video, you can see that uh, either on youtube.com slash gospel tangents, or I've got a special Facebook group devoted for uh, full videos. So subscribe at gospeltangents.com and uh, sign up for just $10 a month. For $20 a month, if you'd like to get some bonus content, uh, maybe some of the stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor, you can sign up for that. And then if you'd like to talk to me, for $100 a month, we'll, we'll do a monthly phone call on something like Zoom, and you can ask me anything you want. So thanks again. Also, don't forget about the merch, mugs, t-shirts, um, hats, things like that. I'm trying to get the ties up there. Hopefully, I can get up, up there. And uh, thanks again for watching Gospel Tangents, and click here for some more videos.